Hi everybody, in the last video I walked through an introduction to parametric constraints. In this video I'm going to begin walking you through the process of creating a simple Lego brick. Okay, and by Lego brick what I mean is we gone to the internet and we went up and looked, uh, you know, a bunch of, of different images up like this one. Okay, and this gives us uh, the dimensions for a basic 2 by one Lego brick. But you'll notice at the bottom it says all measurements are in Lego units, which is 1.6 millimeters. So everything in Lego land is built as a multiple, some scaled version of 1.6 millimeters. So when it says it's six units tall, it doesn't mean six inches, it doesn't mean six millimeters, it means six Lego units. So that's what we're going to keep in mind as we go and build this, and this is why we're going to do this as our example for parametric equations, okay? So um, let's go over here and do a little bit of setup first before we get going. Let's make sure that we create a new folder and we title it 8.1 Parametric Modeling hit enter and let's make sure that we go into that folder so that everything that we create and save will be inside of this folder for now once you have the folder named 8.1 parametric modeling you can hide the data panel also because lego works in metric units of millimeters we need to change our settings we currently build in inches so we're going to come over here to this little gear right here and expand this little drop down menu and we're going to change our active units from inches to millimeters. Please don't set this as the default because most of the parts we build are in inches and you want inches to remain as the default unit. So I'll leave that unchecked and click OK. I'm now working in millimeters. Now, let's go up and let's pull up this sheet and I've actually put this in Microsoft Paint and use my awesome paint skills to kind of mark out some dimensions for you. You'll notice if we build from the base, Okay, that the base unit is five inches deep. The width is a little bit tougher from this document to figure out, but basically it says we have one inch, notice in green here, okay, one inch here. You trace this down, it goes to the edge of the circle. Sorry, not inch, one Lego unit. Three more Lego units to get to the other side of the circle. Then we have in between these, in between these two, we have two inches or two Lego units to get from here to here. That's up to six now. Then we have three more, nine, and then one more, ten. It's a ten unit wide, ten Lego units wide by five Lego units deep. And when we raise that up off the ground, it will be six Lego units tall. Okay, five by ten of the base, six units tall. So let's go in and let's first define what a Lego unit is and then we can use it. I'm going to go up to modify and I'm going to go to change parameters. Now this time we don't have a box built, but we're going to go through and we're going to click on the plus button and we are going to define a parameter. In this case, let's just call it Lego. That makes a lot of sense. Lego is going to be a unit measured in millimeters and in fact in this case it's going to be 1.6 millimeters dimension okay now comment you can leave blank but that might be helpful if you're like building a power plant and there's a hundred different engineers working on this you can comment on the side and just leave a better description of what exactly you're talking about for now we're just going to leave this blank i'm going to hit enter and we'll notice it shows up now as a user parameter i'm going to go ahead and click ok now when i start to build i can go through and i can sketch a rectangle I'm going to sketch on the base, and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is five Lego units tall. That would be five times Lego. Notice it fills in in black, and then even auto auto fills down here. You can click on it if you want to. Okay. Whoops, I got to redo it now. Ready? Five times Lego for the depth. Tab over. Ten times Lego. For the width hit enter okay and what in the heck went on here zoomed me way out didn't it okay five times lego times ten times lego okay i am done with that so i hit stop sketch go back to my home view and we're ready to extrude e for extrude right on the surface bring it up and the box is six lego units tall so six times Lego will give me the height. There we go. Now, 
the next thing we need to do is add some circles to the top. So back to this, okay? What I know is that the circles are three units in diameter, and I know that they are one unit from the edge. Now this is gonna be a little tricky, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna create a sketch on the top surface. C for circle, I'll create a couple of circles. Whoops, I accidentally drew it right on the midpoint there. But otherwise, notice I didn't take any time at all to try to figure out where those circles were or how big they were. I'll get to that in a second. What I do know is this. D for dimension. Click on the circle. And I need to type three Lego units. Three times Lego for the diameter of that circle. Now I could easily go through and make this three times Lego as well, but I'm gonna use the geometric constraints instead. These are actually better. We would prefer to use these anytime we can, okay? It's simpler. So for instance, I can use the equal constraint, looks like an equal sign, and that will make everything that I click equal in measurement. So if I say I want this to be equal in measure to the second circle, they're gonna be the same size. Now, whenever one changes, the other one has to change. I also need to get these circles in the correct location. Right now, you can see that if I take these, I can move them around anywhere. Okay? So, I mean, they should be in the middle, right? I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint. Now, I'm going to say that these two circles need to line up with each other horizontally. There we go. Now, I'm going to escape out of this so you can see what happens, right? Look. They move with each other. Now I need to lock them into some point of the rectangle, like the middle of the rectangle, maybe the midpoint right here. So I'm going to come back, horizontal vertical constraint. I'm going to click on the center of the circle. You have to hold down shift to get this X to appear. Without shift, you're going to hover over it. Nothing's going to happen. But with shift, there, it appears. Click. Click. Now they all line up. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the horizontal vertical constraint, and you can now see, look what my circles can do. They can't move up and down, but they can move left and right. So now it comes time just to dimension them from the edge, and this will be the last thing I do on this video. Uh, actually, no, I'll go ahead and finish it off in this video. It'll be a longer video, okay? I'm going to hit D for dimension. This order is important. Ready? I'm going to click on the line. Then I'm going to right-click. And instead of choosing a point from the center of the circle to the line, I want to go to a tangent point. So I'm going to highlight this option and click on it. And notice what happens when I hover over the circle now. Look, it says I want a dimension to this X instead. I left click, come up here, and I know that that's one Lego unit away. One times Lego, or just Lego. Places it. Circle turns black, it's locked in place. So again, watch what I do, ready? Line, right click, pick the tangent. Click on the X of the circle, come up here. It's one Lego unit, hit enter. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sketch. Look at it from my home view. I'm ready to extrude those circles up. So back to the dimensions, I can see from the dimensions right here, you can see this one, okay, from here to here, tells me that these circles have been extruded one Lego unit upward. So back to this, E for extrude, pick your two circles, bring them up one Lego unit. We're getting really close, okay. Now, Legos are hollow. We gotta be able to take all of this and like remove that interior material, right? So let me teach you a new trick today. We have not used this in our class so far. It's called the shell command, okay? What's really nice is that the, it's under the modify menu. I can come over here to shell and it shows you a picture. What it does is it hollows it out and it leaves a material thickness there that's consistent everywhere. We can define how thick the material is. Well, I know that if I go back here, that it tells me this is a one inch thickness border all the way around. Okay, one inch thick, or not one inch, excuse me, one Lego unit thick border all the way around. So if I come back, I go to modify, shell, 
what it wants me to do is to select where do we want to begin shelling from. Well, I want to begin hollowing out from the bottom. So I'm going to click on the bottom surface. I'm going to define a thickness of one Lego unit. I click OK. Hollows out the whole thing, including those little circular pieces on the inside. Everything is exactly one Lego unit thick everywhere. That's pretty neat. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is add the text to the top. I guess we'll consider this optional, especially since we found out this morning that the MacBook does not have the same fonts loaded as the Windows version that I'm using. Okay, but I'm going to go create a surface, a sketch here on the surface, the top surface. Under the sketch menu, I'm going to go click on text. I'm just going to type out here the word Lego in all caps. I'm going to swing this around so it's 90 degrees. And I'm going to change the font from Arial to what's called Bajos 93. Now, we found out again this morning that um, that doesn't exist on the MacBook. So pick something that you think looks good. I'm going to click OK. Notice that I'm not concerned right now about the size of the text because I can grab a corner of the rectangle and resize easily. And I can drag around. And I'm just going to go make this kind of fit. Okay, nothing special. We'll make this fit in. Whoops. Get back vertical. Oh, I've locked into something here. Okay, this is good that this is happening. So I'm going to click on this constraint. I've locked into something underneath it. I'm going to hit delete. Nope, that's not what I want. Boy, let's just undo a couple of times until I get it back to. There we go. Now, now I can start moving around. I don't know what happened there. Oh, there it is. I locked into that circle. Dang it. Okay, undo again. <sighs> Frustrating, but you know, this kind of stuff happens. That's okay. Getting pretty close. You know what? I like that. That looks all right to me. Okay. Maybe a little bit smaller. Give myself some leeway here. There. Okay. I'm done with that. I'm going to hit stop sketch. Look at it from above and extrude that upward. This is going to be really tiny. Let's say like 0.1 millimeters. Okay, 0.1 millimeters. Click OK. Now I have Lego on top of it, right? Now I want that Lego on this one too. Here's the problem is that let's say that I had like one of those nice green rectangular base plates of like 100 circles. I don't want to have to go draw this in every single one. So here's another trick for you. Okay, I'm going to come up. I'm going to create a pattern. In this case, it's going to be not around an axis, nothing circular. It's going to be a rectangular pattern, okay? So I'm going to click here. It's going to ask, what do you want to pattern? I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click that last little extrusion that I did. I want to, I want to pattern this. I'm going to click on direction, and I'm going to say that I want to pattern on this axis. In other words, I can choose any line that moves the direction that I want it to. So this line would work just fine. I'm going to click here. Start to draw out, draw it out here. Okay. I want a quantity of two of these things to be patterned. And it turns out, I'll save you the time of looking at the dimensions. It turns out that it's exactly, now notice I have to use negative to move this direction, negative eight Lego units. Okay. It's exactly eight Lego units. Nope, that's not correct. It's five Lego units to the next one. Between dot to dot is five Lego units. I click OK. Hit enter again. It's working. It's doing its thing. There we go. I got Lego on both of them. Man, we are so close. Okay. Let's do one more step in the next minute. Let's go through and modify the physical material. Modify menu, physical material. Turns out Legos are made of ABS plastic. So I'm going to go in my library of materials down to plastic and click on it. It'll expand the menu. I'm going to take ABS plastic, click, and drag it over on top of the material. Now I've just made it out of plastic. I'm going to click close. Now it's the type of material that I need. I'm going to click A for appearance. I'm going to go, now I've already done this, so it's expanded a little bit, okay? But I'm going to go into the paint materials to glossy materials, and I'm going to choose glossy red paint, drag and drop it over. And we now have fully completed basic red Lego piece. That's pretty darn cool. So congratulations, hopefully you understand the use of param param parametric equations, how we use the Lego unit to build everything. 
If you have any questions, please ask me in class.